Now this was the device that started it all. This is called the Zip It Wireless Z2, and this is what got me into ARM devices. So let's check it out. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with the device, this is called the Zip It Wireless Z2. And this model came out around 2007 and it has wireless built in. Before that, it was just called a Zip It. And these devices were formerly known for its messaging capabilities. Now, back in 2006, 2007, AOL Instant Messenger or AIM or Yahoo Messenger was a very, very popular thing where everybody would jump into front of a computer, go online, and then message all their friends through instant messaging. This was supposed to eliminate that process and have it a portable device. Now, keep in mind, smartphones was just starting to come out at that time and they still didn't have instant messenger or all that other stuff. They did have texting ability, but they didn't have what this device had. So this was very popular back in the day. Now I managed to pick one of these up in a Target around 2009. And luckily there was actually a pretty decent community behind this. Uh, converting these devices with U-Boot and installing kernels and Linux onto these devices. The specs on these are nowhere near as what you would expect them to be, but this is what really got me into ARM devices. Honestly, I didn't know ARM could actually be a computer, like their CPUs. I just thought it was for embedded devices, but after playing around with this in 2009, it got me into a whole different world. That's how come I do a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. I do a lot of anything that has to do with ARM because I am particularly intrigued by that CPU. Now, unfortunately, this is such an old device. A lot of the stuff will not work. I currently have Arch Linux installed, which I did recently, which it was a bad idea, but I do have Arch Linux installed here and a lot of the repositories don't work. So I do have to go in and probably modify the mirrors to get it to work. But no matter, I'm not really gonna be showing off the device. I just wanted to talk about this more so because I was very interested and I managed to find this device out of my stash. Now let's jump to a PC a little bit so I can show you the specs and talk about what this device was all about because it's very, very interesting. Now, first we have the wiki for the Zip It Wireless Messenger 2. Now, originally it's a small clamshell. Like this kind of came out at a time where Sidekicks was a thing. And you, if you guys remember Sidekick where you could flip the phone and have instant messenger and stuff like that, this came out around that time and that's how popular instant messaging was. Now, originally it's a spinoff off the Zip It Wireless Incorporated device and this is called the Z2, which also supports Wi-Fi. The original device, I didn't know if it supported Wi-Fi or not. I never had it, but I know that Z2, which is the one I have, does support Wi-Fi. And it was made particularly for AOL Instant Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, and MSN Messenger. And I did use the original operating system for that, maybe for a short period of time, before I decided to install U-Boot and Linux on here. Now, it has a 2.8 inch screen QVGA, and I think it's a resolution of 320 by 240, which is very low. A uh, backlit keyboard, a mini SD card, MP3 player that was built in called MyTunes, and a photo viewer because it has an SD card on here for your photos. You also have Xscale PXA270 uh, CPU at 312 megahertz, which was not fast at all. Even for that standard of time, like 2007, 2008, uh, 300 megahertz was very, very slow even at that time because we were into the gigahertz. Like we had the P Pentium 4 at that time with hyper threading and they were going up to four gigahertz already. So 312 megahertz processor was very slow for this, but it was enough to do what you needed to. 32 megs of SD RAM and a Wi-Fi module and 1230 milliamp hour of lithium, pot lithium battery. Now, a lot of people at that time did do a lot of homebrew on this, as I said, and that's what really got me involved. Originally, I had Ubuntu 9.04 installed on here, and I regret actually just wiping it out and installing Arch Linux a couple of days ago because I actually had media players in here. I had a bunch of stuff that was built in, and I pre-downloaded it so I knew it worked. Now that I decided to wipe it out and install Arch Linux, knowing that the mirrors are all broken, I couldn't get all the software in here, and I didn't want to spend another hours upon hours trying to figure out the mirror situation, how to lock the kernels down or recompile my own kernel. Yeah, that's not happening, but they were very interesting devices. And this is what really got me into the ARM ecosystem along with like Raspberry Pi, but Raspberry Pi is more of a 2012 thing, came out later. Now talking about as soon as Raspberry Pi came out, the first version, 2012, I jumped to buy that one because I knew what the CPU was capable of. Now, luckily for us, we still have this website uh, where you could still download images, and that's what I did. And it actually still shows you on how to get U-Boot uh, working and talk about some of the stuff of the operating system. Now, the original creator of the U-Boot, which was Moswald, 
Uh, their website is down, but if you go to archive.org, you can actually still pull up the instructions on how to get uh, U-Boot working and how to get some of the pre-compiled stuff working, which you might have to like do a little bit of digging to see what you need to do to get this website going. But I think it just recently broke down because I remember checking this site probably, yeah, 2020, a couple of years ago, and I, I remember it was still up. Oh, never mind. Just go through this website and you might be able to find what you're looking for to get instructions on how to build your own U-Boot uh, if you are planning to get these. I'm pretty sure you could still find these on eBay if you're interested in playing around with them. But if you want to play around with it, the furthest you can probably take it is DOSBox. Or maybe playing some older videos, not the newer videos that we have now. We just don't have the graphic card for it. What I installed is the Arch Linux image. And it's made in 2012 and this is the latest image I could find. Again, I regret doing it, but wireless does work. I was able to ping Google. A few of the stuff do work if I really wanted to get it up and going, but I don't know if I'm really gonna spend that time. Anyway, if you guys got any particular devices that got you into computing or into ARM or into anything, let me know that in the comments below because I'm interested in checking them out. This was really just a short nostalgic video because of a device I found in my little stash and I wanted to talk about it. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.